How's it going guys? Thanks for watching another informative video from the workbench here at RC Juice. Today we're going to talk about BECs. BECs are another topic that we get quite a few questions and emails about, so hopefully we can help clear up some confusion for you guys. Uh, first things first, what does BEC stand for? BEC stands for Battery Eliminator Circuit, which in, in my opinion that can kind of be a confusing name because you figure you have a battery in an electric RC vehicle, so why are you trying to eliminate the battery? The name kind of comes from the nitro days where you would run a separate battery uh, to, to power your electronics, to power your receiver, uh, to, to run your servos. Um, so BEC just means that you don't need a separate battery for running your onboard electronics, so you're eliminating that battery. So BEC, battery eliminator circuit. Um, you may also see these referred to as SBECs, UBECs, LBECs. Those just kind of refer to some different types of BECs. Uh, your SBEC is a switching BEC, which is the way in which that BEC works to convert uh, current. Uh, there is UBEC, which can stand for Universal BEC or Ultimate BEC. And then there are LBECs, which are Linear BECs, which again is kind of referring to how it is that that BEC converts your current over. Uh, for the purposes of what we're talking about today, that doesn't matter so much, um, but just understand that all those are different types of BECs. So for the most part, the majority of all of our ESCs do have built-in BECs. Uh, so we can kind of give you an example of exactly how it is they work. Uh, we'll take a look here. Here we have a three cell battery. So the nominal voltage on this battery is 11.1 .1 volts. So we hook this up to a voltmeter, and we'll see we got about 11.4 volts coming out of this battery. So now we'll take this battery, plug it into our ESC here. It's powered on. Here is the main lead coming from the ESC. This is the one that would go to channel 2 on your receiver. And if we measure the voltage coming out of here, you'll see that we have about 6 volts. So the internal BEC on this ESC is taking the voltage coming from the battery and it is stepping it down uh, to about six volts, um, which is a pretty standard voltage for powering your onboard electronics. Uh, so it's important to know the specs of an internal BEC in relation to the other electronics that you're running on your vehicle. If that BEC provides too low a voltage, you might not be taking advantage of all the power and speed on, its, on your servo, for instance. Um, if the voltage is too high, you may burn up a servo or you may burn up your receiver. So once again, it, it's important to know what the output of the BEC on your ESC is and what your other electronics are and to make sure that they're gonna be compatible with each other. On some ESCs, the B, uh, excuse me, the BEC is adjustable output on it. So sometimes you can switch it, uh, say from six volts to 7.4 volts. Uh, sometimes you can go up to eight or 8.4 volts on some newer ESCs. And that's always nice because sometimes you've got, say, a, a servo that's only rated for six volts, or you've got a high voltage servo that can go up to 7.4 volts. So that way with the same ESC, you can switch over your uh, BEC output settings and run different servos. On some RC applications, you actually run a separate BEC uh, from what's inside your ESC. This here is an example of a standalone BEC. And reason that you would want to do that in certain situations, um, namely in things that have much higher current draw on them, say a large scale, like a fifth scale RC vehicle or large scale RC planes, on a lot of those applications, you need quite a bit more current than what a standard BEC inside your ESC can provide. So sometimes you just first of all need that additional current to power larger servos in those vehicles. And the other reason, especially on something like an airplane where an ESC failure can be a little more catastrophic when the plane falls out of the sky, is a standalone BEC in general is a little bit more robust than the BEC that's inside uh, your ESC. So on some ESCs, they actually do not even come with an internal BEC. Those are referred to opto ESCs. So if you ever see opto, that just means that that ESC does not have a built-in BEC and you will need to run a separate BEC. If you do decide to run a separate BEC as a precaution, 
in your setup where your ESC does already have an internal BEC, it's really important that you disconnect your power wire from your ESC lead. Um, on, on this guy, it's gonna be your red wire. You can just pull up the small tab on your servo plug and just pull out that lead, or you can cut the wire. But if you leave that wire intact and you also are running a separate BEC and you plug that into your receiver, you're gonna be doubling up your voltage. So if both of these BECs are set to six volts, all of a sudden you've got 12, volt, uh, 12 volts going to your receiver, which is going to your other electronics. You can burn up your receiver, you can burn up servos. So again, real important to make sure that you separate the internal BEC. You want to pull out that power wire and disable it anytime you're running a standalone BEC. So again, on a standalone BEC, the operation is going to be the same as what's an uh, internal BEC inside a speed control. So again, we got our three cell battery here running about 11.4 volts. This is an adjustable BEC. Right now we are set to 5.5 volt output. So we're plugged in and we'll see our output here. So again, we got about five and a half volts. Uh, we can move the little jumper on it. And for example, you'll see if I can hold this together for you guys. There we go. Now we got about five volts. So again, this is our standalone BEC. So now maybe we understand where it is that the actual power comes from, from your receiver. Why it is that you can plug in your servo and your servo will work it will receive power that's coming from your BEC and your ESC. So we'll take the battery, plug it into our ESC. So now we take ESC lead, plug it into channel one. I'm sorry, channel two. Servo goes into channel one. Servo works. Servo is getting that power that's just getting channeled through the receiver but is actually coming from the BEC inside the ESC. Uh, so one other topic that is kind of related to this is the topic of glitch busters. So a lot of you may have heard of glitch busters, you may have heard of brownouts. So this is a concern when you've got uh, certain servos are notorious for pulling high amounts of current. So what happens in that situation is if your servo is pulling too much current, it can actually overpower the BEC inside the speed control and it'll actually shut down for a second. So you lose all output from that BEC. So we call it a brownout because you lose all radio control because again, you're actually losing voltage on there. Uh, so one of the things that helps with that is a glitch buster, which is just a simple capacitor. And a capacitor will plug into any spare channel on your receiver. You always wanna make sure that you're lining it up in the same orientation as your other plugs, black wire towards the outside. You can plug it into any empty channel and a glitch buster is, is sort of a hands-off device. Once you plug it in, you don't need to do anything, set it up, or even think about it. This just works as a reserve. Capacitors, as most of you know, just will store excess current. So in instances where you are pulling quite a bit of load on that BEC, and it would normally cut out on you, uh, your capacitor will step in and provide some extra current and help keep your, your voltage stable and keep it from cutting out. Uh, hopefully guys, this explains BECs a little bit better and exactly what they are or what they do. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please contact us at the contact info posted down below. And as always guys, thank you for watching.